I've been seeing more and more evidence on some people where the ACL can heal in right. certain cases. Like, what about if you had an ACL tear and you went and got a PRP injection just to see if you could like boost that your natural healing process? Like, would that be a total mistake? Or um, what do you think? I mean, yeah, I, I think the evidence, evidence is pretty clear that if if ACL left alone, even with injections, that the healing potential uh, of the ACL is not high got it so and then think about the think about it like this too so the acl is a is a ligament so it actually provides stability it's a static stabilizer of the knee in essence what happens with a tear is that and sometimes we see these with injuries where people should have an acl sprain but not an actual tear and mm -hmm. what will happen is that that ligament will stretch out mm -hmm. and so as you can imagine with this as the stretched out rubber band it just doesn't give you the same type of stability so what patients end up complaining of, even though their MRI looks like, hey, your ACL is intact, there's the, it, it, it may end up where patients come back at three months, six months, a year later, and they say, gosh, I just can't trust my knee. Mm, it's unstable. Like it it's should, unstable. Yeah. Every time I cut, it just shifts. And, it, and, and we also know that the studies show us that the instability after ACL will lead to increased risk of meniscus tears because that's your secondary stabilizer. Yeah. So yes, you're right. There are ample evidence that shows that people can do really well without an ACL. Mm -hmm. There's double blind, you know, placebo control studies that really look at, you know, what's the functional status, how much pain. We know that ACL injuries, if you give it six weeks, eight weeks, they don't hurt. Mm -hmm. they, that's not their complaint. They usually will come back because they don't trust their knee. Got it. Um, and so for, for me, I, I, I find that uh, and, and going back to the idea of trying to get an ACL to heal, we do have options surgically to get ACLs to heal. <laughs> so there are the scaffolds that's laced with PRP, yeah. BMAX, stuff like that, that we can try to get your natural tissue to heal more appropriately. But it's not an injection. It's we actually surgically lay a scaffold there to try to help engage that process. Mm. And that's had promising results uh, in terms of helping regeneration. Is that that new one? Is that got a name? Is it the uh, It's called a bear bear. Yeah. yeah. It's not for everybody. I mean, it's still, it's still, even though it's been around for over a decade, then it's still certainly something that they're looking at what's the right indications, who's the right population, because there's still failure rates, just like with ACL reconstructions, there's still failure rates associated with these. So it's not a one size fits all. But my perspective is that if you're active, if you're engaging in any sort of pivot cutting type activity or sports, Generally, if you want to continue with that, the idea of having a stable knee is definitely what we want to achieve, whether that's with a bear, whether that's with an ACL reconstruction, which is still the majority of time that we offer patients. Um, those are probably the way to go. Some of the other studies that, that, that they quote with these uh, when they compare ACL surgery versus non-surgery groups, uh, we also know that even though the patients may not complain of necessarily pain, uh, they are Definitely more prone to having progression of degenerative joint changes on imaging. So yeah. x-rays, MRIs, oftentimes seven to 10 years after ACL injuries will show signs of deterioration, more so in the non-operative group than the operative group. That being said, just because you had ACL surgery does not mean that there's you won't have the potential for deterioration like because it's that impact. Yeah. It's the injury to the joint. Mm -hmm. And it's a major injury to the joint because oftentimes on the MRI at the time of injury, not only are you tearing your ACL, you're getting bone bruising, which you know that all that force goes through the cartilage. For sure. And so cartilage damage doesn't happen right away. Mm. It degrades over time. So if you have that inciting impact, it sets off a cascade. You might not see it for a while. To degenerate. And so oftentimes we see them back a couple years later and they start having these cartilage defects and cartilage damage that probably is associated with that initial injury. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like that person who doesn't. It does. It seems like with a lot of these things, like whether because you hear this sometimes with Achilles ruptures that oh you could not have it repaired. And I've heard a lot of people talk. It seems like if you're an athletic individual who needs uh, puts a higher demand on your body, all of these things. There's so much to be said for having a reconstruction because you get that power back, the stability back. Whereas if you're just the person who's maybe you're kind of middle aged, like you say, you just walk or cycle. You're not doing these really high force kind of activities on your system maybe you can get by but at the same time maybe you risk the chances you get osteoarthritis. I see I, you do hear that one a lot with ACL tears that the increased likelihood of having um, early onset osteoarthritis later on I imagine that's probably just because of even if you can't sense it some of the small displacement shifting that's happening between 
the tibia and femur and that maybe is or maybe there's a meniscus, meniscus tear there there's just you're losing that stability and it's harder on the cartilage there's more weight yeah so the the, the belief is that the sh increased shear forces on the cartilage uh, adds on over time I, I have an analogy i use a lot with patients is that you know the best cartilage you have is when you're young when you're a kid uh, kind of like the tire treads on your tires, right? And eventually, our bodies are, are, are amazing structures where they can go a long time and, and, and try to, you know, protect against wear, but it still wears. So everybody, as part of a natural process of aging, will have thin thinning cartilage over time, just like the tire treads on, uh, on your tires. Um, so the idea is, and a lot of times that's why you see the reads on MRI, of, hey, this is normal cartilage for age, mm. is what they're saying is that, yeah, maybe you don't have the thickness of cartilage that you're supposed to have when you're 20, when you're 60, right? I mean, we expect that to happen. Yeah. So that that is a progression. But we know whether it's your shoulder, whether it's your knee, if you have instability, it, it does tend to more progressive wear at a faster rate. It's funny. I used to use that tire tread uh, analogy so much when I was teaching. Like, you've got an underinflated tire and overinflated. It's going to wear your, tre your tread unevenly or... And you can, it is, you can kind of think of joints in that way. 